In this video, in 5 steps, I show you how to make a professional looking front panel, simple and easy to build. Today we'll go through one of the two methods I've developed. Here's a finished example, clean, sleek and tough enough to take a beating, even with greasy hands. But to get this kind of a result, it is important to follow the process carefully. So stick with me and let's dive in! As a first step, you have to draw your panel. You can use any software you are comfortable with, but my go-to is Inkscape. It gives great graphic results and includes good features for technical drawings, like using millimeters as units and offering plenty of alignment tools. First set your page units to millimeters or inches if that's what you are used to. This lets you size shapes to match real-world dimensions accurately. One key feature in Inkscape is layers, super useful for building up reference areas. For example, in the panel I'm designing, which will appear in a future video, I've created a top layer showing the internal space, visible in yellow, a bottom layer which shows the panel and the overall size, grey, and the main layer in the middle with all the components. The top and bottom layers are locked so they are visible but won't get in the way while you are working. Ergonomics is another key factor. How tightly packed can the knobs be? You don't want things too tight, but also you don't want to waste space. So think about layout and functions. Do the controls follow the logical order? Is there room for labels and drawings? And what about internal clearance for each component? To help with that I created a group of shapes for each component. A pink shape for the internal physical space, a lime shape for the minimum spacing between knobs and a white shape with a center mark showing the actual hold size. Then in a separate group the labels also with center mark. That center mark helps you align the label group right on top of the shape group. It's also a good idea to include drawings of the real knobs you plan to use. For each component group everything – shapes, labels and knobs, so it's easy to move things around as you tweak the layout. Once you're happy with the arrangement, ungroup them and sort the elements into different layers. One for knobs, one for labels and drawings, and one for dimensional shapes. Now it's time to align everything. Use the center max from both the dimensional shapes and the label layers to get perfect alignment. And don't stress too much about the knobs drawings, they are just visual references, so they don't need to be pixel perfect. Alright, now prepare your files. Create two versions of your drawings, one with the final panel, labels, drawings, center marks and holes dimensions, and one with just the shapes, center marks and holes, including mounting holes if needed. Save them as two separate files or combine them into one file with both versions clearly separated. Now it's time to print and laminate. All you need is a printer and a laminator or someone who has both, like a print <laughs> shop around the corner. Okay, thank you. Okay. And of course, you also need a panel, aluminum, steel or plastic. You can cut it from a larger sheet just like I did here. You can print with either an inkjet or a laser printer. For a more professional look, I recommend adding a light grey background, maybe with a subtle tint of color. There are two ways to do that. You can include the background directly in your design or use a pre-shaded paper. You need two prints, one on plain paper for the shapes and one laminated with the final panel design. Use paper that's at least 80 grams per square meter, but don't go over under 20. Too thin and it might feel flimsy, too thick and the paper might rip causing the laminate to peel off. You know, you want that sweet spot in between. Finally, prepare both the prints for the next step. Use a cutter for the perimeter and for this job don't be afraid to grab the ruler to guide your hand. Perform the same job on both the paper print and the laminated print. You have to cut out the holes only on the laminated print. 
and for this job use an exact knife or a puncher. However, consider that uh, for the holes that don't need to be precise, such as those that uh, would be covered by knobs, uh, you can cut them out when the panel is finished. Next step, drill your panel. First, double check that your panel has the correct dimensions. Now brush a thin layer of PVA glue. Then attach the paper printer with the shapes. Use the edges to align it carefully with the panel. Be careful not to stretch the paper or the holes will be off. Just lay it down gently and press it in place. And as you can see here, I preach water but drink wine. This was a mistake that cost me a millimeter off for all the holes on that side. Don't repeat this mistake. Now comes the fun part. Use a center punch to mark each hole. And then get ready for the boring job. Yep, it's time to drill. Start with the small pilot holes. Once they are in place, you can enlarge them if needed. It helps keep things accurate. For square holes, start by rough cutting with a jigsaw, leaving about 3 mm of margin. Then finish the shape with a file and a bit of patience. Once you're done, clean up the burrs using a knife or a deboring tool. To remove the paper, just soak the panel in water for a few minutes. If you are working with steel, don't worry about rust, just dry the panel right after rinsing. If your design includes embedded screws, it's a good time now to glue or weld them in place. If you're finding this video useful and enjoyable, why not give a super thanks? Making this video takes time, effort and a bit of gear, so any support really helps. Thank you very much! Now time to glue the final design. Prepare some epoxy glue, liquid epoxy works best with a brush, but thick epoxy works too. If you are using the thicker kind, like in my case, spread it with a small plastic spatula. Go for a thin, even layer. Too much glue just creates a mess. Carefully place the laminated print onto the panel, starting from the center and working your way out. Use the panel edges to make sure it's perfectly aligned. Apply gentle pressure to help the glue spread evenly underneath. Always move from the center outwards. And keep some paper towels socket in ethyl or isopropyl alcohol nearby because they are super handy for smudges or sticky fingers. Once the glue sets, your panel is done in all its glory and looking awesome! Before concluding, some final tips. Protect the panel edges to keep the laminated layer from peeling. When fixing components, avoid super thin glues like cyanoacrylate or super glue as they tend to stain the paper, as you can see here from my little mistake. The method I presented today is the most rugged one. Using this method I made a control panel for a robot and the one of a tachometer. In a future video I show you another method that gives even better results with a satin like finish a bit less rugged. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you won't miss it. I will be heads down on a new project for the next couple of weeks and after that short break I will be back with more. So please don't forget about me. <laughs> but <laughs> for now, in the meantime, that's all folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.